Okay. I think we're all here. We're all ready. Hello. Welcome to another webinar. Uh, this is uh, Phil from the Developer Evangelism Team for WebEx. Uh, so today, we're going to be tapping into the WebEx uh, Web Calling SDK. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, that's going to be presented by our uh, WebEx SDK team. Um, so uh, I'm going to have them introduce themselves here momentarily. Uh, but you know, before we get to over to the main presentation, as usual, I uh, just want to share some of the latest news that uh, you can actually read all about on our blogs page. Um, and that's at uh, developer.webex.com slash blogs. Um, so, got a couple uh, really nice new things here, like starting off with, um, you know, the manager of the Webex developer evangelism team, Adam Weeks. You know, he published a really interesting article about harnessing uh, artificial intelligence or AI in conjunction with the Cisco WebEx SDKs. Um, so, you know, this will open up a lot of new possibilities for developers to create some, you know, cutting edge integrations. Uh, I know, you know, we're all pretty excited about AI, uh, and I think this article should get uh, even more ideas flowing. Uh, next, uh, WebEx product manager Omar El Rafi. Uh, he recently announced the expanded uh, the expansion uh, of WebEx embedded apps on Cisco Room Series devices. Uh, so previously, uh, users on Room OS uh, devices uh, were not able to view embedded apps. You know, once they were launched in a meeting. Uh, so this brings a lot more meeting participants into the fold uh, for using embedded apps. Um, and you can get all the uh, great details about that in his announcement post. Um, and now on to the contact center, um, you know, the lead for WebEx partner developer evangelism, Joe Zanini, you know, he kind of walks us through integrating third party APIs with the HTTP integration connector for WebEx contact center. Uh, so this is for creating custom experiences that enhance routing queue services for, uh, for contact center customers. Um, so this is a really, really informative article. Um, encourage everybody to go check that out. Uh, we actually had a great webinar. Uh, just last month on uh, the Flow Designer. So if you haven't seen that, you know, go check out that recording of our webinar uh, and then make sure you check out Joe's blog too. And finally, um, I added a, a blog post recently on all the activities uh, and sessions that are going on for WebEx developers at Cisco Live in Las Vegas. Uh, so that's coming up here in you know, just over a couple of weeks here. So. Um, I'm going to you know, talk about like the, the classroom sessions we're doing. There's also a hands-on workshop there. We have uh, a, a couple booths in, in, uh, right at, uh, at the WebEx exhibit uh, in the World of Solutions area. So if you're planning to go to the event, and you know, uh, go ahead and check out my post. Uh, you can get all the details of everything that's going on uh, for WebEx developers at Cisco Live. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And that's coming up here in a couple weeks. Um, but with that, that's the news. Let's go ahead and get on to the main presentation. Uh, I'm going to uh, kick it over to uh, our uh, WebEx SDK team um, to start things off and to introduce themselves. So go ahead and take it away. Okay. Um, thank you, Phil. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shreyas. And today we're going to talk about how you can improve your calling experience with the WebEx calling SDK. Uh, next slide. So for today's agenda, uh, we're going to go over a brief introduction about what is WebEx calling SDK. Then we'll see uh, some scenarios where calling SDK can improve a business uh, and it can also improve your calling collaborative experience. Then we're going to see the power of calling SDK with some of the features that it provides. And then we have an amazing demo lined up where we'll take a sample application and bring in all the functionalities from the calling SDK. And finally, we're going to go over some of the integrations and customers that are using calling SDK. So next slide, please. So calling SDK is an SDK tailored for developers who are looking to bring in calling capabilities into their application. Uh, developers can start making calls, do some call management without getting into the intricacies of the communication protocols. To achieve this, uh, we have a meeting library for audio and video management. For a secure connection over the web, we are using WebRTC to manage complex uh, processes and call, ma uh, call data. 
we are using a state machine and then to protect and safeguard your communication privacy, we are also using encryption. So let's have our first slide of question, please. Okay, um, you know, in this one, just uh, see uh, what industry you work in. This is a, a free form response, so you can go ahead and put that in there. We just want to see where our audience is, is all working in. Okay, it is active. Okay, we have a participant. Let's see. Oh. Uh, Technology, that's oh yeah, that's we're nice. familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tech services. Services. It's good. Networking. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right. Software. Right. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, we still have people putting in. Oh yeah. Technology yeah, is getting bigger. Nice. Microservice, all right. Yeah. Microservice, nice. Yeah. Very good. All right, so I think we're all pretty familiar with the technology space then. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, next slide, Phil, please. Sure. So, yeah, thank you for that response. I think. Uh, the calling SDK can be used in almost every single scenario. Uh, but for today's discussion, let's go over some of the use cases. The first use case being customer support. So let's say a customer bought something and they want, they have some technical issue and they want to connect with the support. So calling SDK with calling SDK, a business can provide, or uh, it can offer the ability to make one-on-one -on -one calls to their customers so they can connect with the customer support. Now, since uh, the customer is using business's application, the business has the access to their orders, to the type of searches they are doing, so that the business can provide the best service possible. Another uh, use case would be financial sector, where a customer might want to know about some investment policy, or maybe they just want to know about their retirement plan. With calling SDK embedded in the financial application, uh, a customer can connect with the advisor really quickly and even share some of their uh, sensitive financial information uh, via the DTMF capability in the calling SDK. Um, this will ensure privacy and make sure that uh, all your data is secure. Another use case would be in retail. So nowadays, all the retail applications have millions of products across so many categories. So a customer might want to know more about a product so they can get connected with the sales representative. And maybe sales representative does not have all the details, so they want to transfer the call. With calling SDK, they can just transfer the call uh, to the right person and the customer can get uh, the correct set of uh, information. Next slide, please. So as of now, calling SDK only supports audio calls. But there is an effort to bring in video calls, uh, which is in the pipeline right now. So once calling SDK also support video calls, there will be many opportunities that open up. One of them being telemedicine. Now consider a scenario, a patient wants to get, in connect, get connected with a healthcare professional, but they can't physically be present at the healthcare institution. So they can use the calling SDK embedded in the uh, healthcare application and get connected with the doctors. So this will ensure timely medical intervention and also increase the access of healthcare. Another use case is in education. So students want to connect with their professors for every single doubt. Um, we're calling SDK, but the professor may not be available all the time. So with calling SDK, a professor can mark himself as on do not disturb, or maybe they can uh, forward all their calls to a teaching assistant. This will make sure that the process of teaching never stops. And finally, we also have real estate where before buying a house, everyone wants to look at their purchase multiple times. So with calling SDK, they can connect with their real estate agent as many times as possible and get many virtual tours. 
So I can go on and on about many more use cases, but for the sake of time, let's uh, move on. So let's have the next slide of question. Okay. Uh, so, um, so this one, another audience poll, what, what is your knowledge level of the WebEx calling SDK? You just starting out, you know, you already learned a little bit about it. Oh, that's nice. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good mix so far. <laughs> okay, no experts. Oh, oh, here's the experts. All right. We have experts. We do yeah. have experts. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. It's great. It's like a, a lot of us already have a good understanding. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Capable users and experts. Oh, we have oh, a lot of have. experts today. Okay. <laughs> You're just being shy at first. <laughs> yeah. All right, still got it. All right, so it looks like the, the majority of our responders do have a good understanding of it. And you know, we also have a, a, a whole lot of experts too, you know, on the cable users, and some of you just starting to learn, which is still very good, and we're we're happy you decided to join too. Okay. All right, so let's get to the next slide. Um, thank you for that uh, amazing response. Yeah, as we all saw, we, we have some experts and we have some people who are just starting out. So the next few slides I think will be uh, beneficial for every single one of us. So with, with the next slide, let's see uh, about what's the power and what are the features of calling SDK. So with calling SDK, it becomes really easy to make one-on-one -on -one calls. Calling SDK also provides some basic call management features like uh, whole resume, uh, voicemail, uh, call history, and background noise reduction. There are some advanced features as well, like uh, transfer uh, and call settings about which let's talk in the next few slides. Uh, next slide, please. So um, we have so many features, but uh, we should first know how uh, a person, uh, how a user can get access to all these features. So, uh, calling SDK uses multiple clients, and each of these clients give access to many, uh, multiple features. So, the first client that we have is calling client, which gives us access to line registration, the ability to make calls, and to other supplementary services like call resume and call transfer. We also have call history client, which allows us to get a user's call records. Another client that we have is call settings. So with call settings, a user can uh, personalize their uh, calling experience based on their preferences. And then we also have voicemail client, which allows us to manage all our voicemails. Uh, next slide, please. So, with all these clients, we have multiple features. Some of the features that we want to talk about uh, is first one is transfer. So call transfer is the functionality with which a user can transfer their ongoing call to another party. Calling SDK provides two types of call transfer. One is blind transfer, where the call is transferred to a designated recipient without any prior consultation. So a simple scenario here would be Harvey um, has some issue with his refunds. So Harvey calls Benjamin, that is the sales representative, Benjamin does not have all the details about uh, refunds, so Benjamin transfers the call to Jane in the finance department. Now, this enables a quick and efficient way of call routing, but there is a more sophisticated way of doing this, that is through consult transfer. So, in consult transfer, we first consult the intended recipient, make sure that they are ready and available to take the call, and only then we transfer their call. So the similar scenario will look like Harvey has an issue with uh, his refund. So Harvey calls Benjamin. Now Benjamin uh, puts Harvey on hold. Then Benjamin calls Jane in the finance department, make sure that Jane has all the details and uh, she's willing to take the call. And only then Benjamin transfers Harvey to Jane. So we have a, a wiki already available on our GitHub repository, which talks all about uh, various calling supplementary services available. So do check that out. Uh, next slide, please. 
So another, uh, next slide. Yeah. So another uh, feature that we have is call setting. So with call setting, a user can customize their calling experience based on their, uh, according to their uh, preferences and requirement. So with call settings, we have the ability to put all our calls on call forwarding where all the incoming calls will be tra uh, will be transferred to um, another number that the user provides. Another capability that we have is do not disturb where all the, all the incoming calls will be temporarily disabled. Um, we also have the ability to put call waiting where if a user is on an, uh, is already on a call, they will get notified about all the incoming calls, uh, to that user. And finally, we also have voice, the ability to capture and store voicemail in call setting. Again, we have uh, a great uh, wiki already available on the GitHub repo. So do check that out. Next slide, please. Another advanced feature that we have is background noise reduction. Now consider a scenario where maybe you're working from a cafe and your background is a little noisy. With the calling SDK, you can decide to enable background noise reduction, which will make sure that it is just your voice that is getting uh, to the other side. And we also have a code snippet which shows that it is that easy to enable and disable this, uh, this effect. Next slide. So with all that knowledge, let's get on with the most exciting part of the webinar, that is the demo. So in the demo, we'll uh, take a sample application and bring in all the functionalities of WebEx calling uh, SDK into it. And then uh, we'll do a registration and authentication, and then we'll start making inbound and outbound calls. We'll also showcase some of the advanced features like hold resume, call transfer, and call history. So let's get on with the demo. Uh, Priya, over to you. Thank you, Shreyas. Hello everyone. So for today's demo, we will explore two scenarios to showcase calling SDK and its features. So to talk about first scenario, Shreyas, can we have that up? Yes. Okay. So in the first scenario, we will simulate a customer initiating a call to the support line, which is then received by an available agent. Once the call is answered, a two-way media is established, allowing for clear communication between the customer and the agent. Agent will then demonstrate the ability to place the call on hold and resume the conversation. This scenario will conclude with the customer disconnecting the call. Let's walk you through the technical aspects of implementing this scenario step by step. On the screen, you will notice two files. On the right side, uh, the file contains the fully functional code. And on the left uh, side, we have a workspace open where we will paste the relevant code snippets to leverage various features. We will begin with the first step, which is initializing the calling instance by invoking the calling.init method, and it requires specific configuration parameters. These configurations have been pre-prepared for today's demo. The two important configuration parameters that I would like to focus on are the access token, which is passed within the WebEx config, and the client configuration that is passed inside the call calling configuration. As we previously discussed in the presentation about different client modules in the SDK, the client configuration here is required to instruct the SDK which modules to instantiate during this initialization. To understand more about other parameters, refer to the SDK documentation that provides a comprehensive overview of all the other configuration attributes available. Now the next step is to listen for the ready event to identify if the calling instance is ready. On reception of this event, we can go ahead and invoke the register method on the calling instance to provision the device with the WebEx calling and instantiate the required client modules based on the config. For today's demo, we will concentrate on the calling client. Let's fetch its instance and utilize it to fetch the lines created for the user whose access token was provided. We will use getLines method available within the calling client to do so. Before we move on to the next step, it is important to note that calling SDK supports multiple lines for a user, but currently only one line per user is functional. Therefore, we are fetching the first entry from the response of the get lines method. With the line object at hand, we will proceed to register the line with WebEx calling using this register method. 
This method will send the registration request out, but successful registration is confirmed only when we receive the registered event on this line object, which also provides the updated line information. The registered line also has an incoming call event that we need to listen for to get notified about the inbound calls. Let's move this code that we covered so far to our demo file now. Next, once uh, we are done with the paste, we will go through the steps to initiate outbound calls or receive inbound calls on the line. We have few prerequisites before we can initiate an outbound call. First is we need to fetch a local media stream using the create microphone stream method to be used as local audio. Next, we will create a call object with the specified destination address and so that we can access the call specific methods using this call object. And the last is we have to set up call listeners to track different state transition that the call undergoes. So we have uh, updating the caller ID event, um, connect event that tells when the call is answered, remote media to receive the remote audio, and the disconnect uh, event to uh, get notified of the call disconnect. Now to place the call, we will invoke the dial method with the local audio stream, stream created. Let's move this code as well uh, to the demo file. So just one thing, uh, can we zoom into the text a little bit more, Chris, just so that the audience can see things. Is that cool? Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah. Okay, so now that is done. Uh, now we'll move on to how the inbound call will be received. So on the call party side, an incoming call will be received since we are already listening for the incoming call event that we covered before. For incoming calls, we will follow similar prerequisites uh, creating a microphone stream, setting up listeners. And after that, we can invoke the answer method with the created local audio stream to answer the call. And that's it. After this, the customer and agent will be connected with the two-way media. Let's copy and paste this code too. Once we have a two-way media communication between the customer and the agent, agent has the option to place the customer's call on hold and resume it back. And both actions can be done using this hold do hold resume method. And after that, customer can go ahead and disconnect the call by invoking the end method. So we will move this code as well. And that's it, that marks the complete flow for the scenario one. We can go ahead and see this scenario one in action now. So we have built a small travel website that covers the customer support scenario. We have two views available here. On the left side, we have the customer, Harvey, who is logged into the website and using it to book flights, hotels, holiday packages, etc. And on the right side, the customer support agent, Benjamin, is logged into the same website and is available on standby to assist customers. When this website gets loaded for the first time for both agent and customer, it takes care of all the initializations and line registration that we have seen uh, before. The customer, after getting registered, has his booking history open um, and he needs assistance with one of the history. So he has the option to reach out uh, to the support service by clicking on the call support button and an outbound call is placed to the agent using the dial method. Agent will receive an incoming call notification on its end with the option to answer the call. The agent clicks on the answer button, which will trigger the answer method and call gets answered. And as you can see that on the agent side, the customer details also get complete, got updated with his booking history details once the call was answered. So there you go. The customer and the agent are connected on a one-to-one -one call with two-way media communication. Now agent has the option to place the customer's call on hold by clicking on this hold icon as probably he needs to check something within the team and resume. So at this point of time when customer, uh, when the agent puts the call on hold on the customer side, customer will be hearing music on hold. So that was, that sound was that. And then after he has the relevant information, agent can resume the call back to update the customer and there will be a two way media communication back between customer and agent. Now, customer is satisfied with the information provided and he can go ahead and disconnect the call by clicking on the end call button. So that was the end of scenario. That was a demo for the uh, scenario one covering one-to-one -one call and whole resume feature. 
I will hand, hand it over to Karthik now as he will walk us through the second scenario. Over to you, Karthik. Yeah. Thank you, Priya. So yes, let's go back to the presentation to see what is the scenario two. In scenario two, we will showcase the console transfer. Initial steps are the same where the customer calls the agent and the agent answers the call. There is two-way media uh, established. Now agent wants to consult their supervisor. So agent puts the customer call on hold. Then agent initiate a call to the supervisor. When supervisor answers the call, and we have a two-way audio. Now agent decides to complete the transfer. Once the transfer is completed, the agent will be dropped out from the both the calls. Customer will be connected to the supervisor. Now we will go through the technical implementation of the scenario two at the code level. So steps from one to six are the similar as we have seen in the scenario one, where we initialize calling, register and call the agent. The next step would be to initiate the console transfer. First, we need to put the existing call on hold, then dial a new call out to the supervisor. Existing methods like do, hold resume and dial will be used to perform these two actions and initiate the transfer. Once the call is connected with the supervisor, agent triggers the complete transfer method and passes the transfer type as consult and the call ID of the second call between supervisor and the agent to finish the consult transfer. The customer and supervisor are connected on a call with the two-way media and the agent will be dropped out of the call. Now, we will see the demo for the consult transfer in action. Yeah, we are refreshing the page now for the second scenario where we are initialize the call and then the line registration. Let's get the first call between customer and agent up and running. Once we have a two-way media flowing between uh, customer and agent, the agent can go ahead and click on the transfer button to initiate the console transfer, which will put customer call on a hold and open the dial spell. The agent can dial the supervisor number. Now you will hear the ringtone as a supervisor getting the incoming call notification. Yes, that was the ring too. Once the supervisor answers the call, we'll go ahead and click on the complete transfer button to finish the consult transfer. As you see, the agent dropped out of the, both the call and the customer is connected with the supervisor. Once the customer query got answered, now customer can disconnect the call. That was the end of the scenario two, which covered the consult transfer feature. Yes, now we are moving on to the next feature in our calling SDK, which is call history. Now we will take a look at how it is implemented at the code level. To access the call history, we need a call history client. Then by listening for the user recent session event, you can easily obtain the call, rec call records from the client. Data is received on this event, we'll have this complete call history. Yeah, let's go back to the website and see how it works. Let's refresh the page and get the customer and uh, agent register. We should be able to see the call history coming up on the left side of the agent window. That brings us to the end of the demo. And next we will see some of our integration and customers who is using our calling SDK. It will be handled by Kesava. Over to you, Kesava. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Karthik. Uh, before moving on to the customers, Phil, can we have the next slide or question? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, just to get a, an idea of uh, you know which of the web products that our audience is using, you know which of these products do you use? You use meetings, calling, contact center, all of it. Great. Someone's already using all the oh. <laughs> people. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Good. Yep. Okay. Good. All of the above. No. Experience. Experience. Yeah. If. Nice. Hopefully, this brings more awareness about calling, so we can bump yeah. this calling up. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the all of the above. It's... That's great. Yeah, a yeah, lot of people use everything. That's yeah, that's no, nice. Yeah, a lot of knowledgeable people in our audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. Can can we get back to the slides? Okay, it should be on the slides again now. Do you see the slides? Oh yes, yes we oh. do. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot for this Slido and uh, thanks everyone for the demo. It was a nice demo. It was an amazing demo. Moving along, uh, we did see a lot of people using uh, WebEx calling as well when they said all of the above. So it's, it's great to know. And uh, we'll just look at what are the other big shots that use our uh, WebEx calling Web SDK today. Uh, we'll start with the integrations and on, on the top of the list we have Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams today have WebEx calling integrated where you can, without moving out of the Microsoft Teams, you can look at your call history uh, or you can uh, dial a call. And uh, you, we also have the voicemail uh, management where you can go listen to your voicemails. You can uh, manage pretty much everything on your voicemail. We also do have the uh, call uh, forwarding setting you can uh, forward your calls to one of the other agents from inside the Microsoft Teams app. And whenever you want to place an outbound call, it cross launches the WebEx application today. And that's that's uh, pretty much about the Microsoft Teams integration. Uh, you, you can almost manage everything from inside Microsoft Teams without moving out. Can we have the next slide? Yeah. Phil, can we have the next slide? I went to the next slide already. I don't know why it's not popping up so real quickly. We're on the Salesforce slide now. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, things like this happen in the demo, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, the next integration in line that we have for the WebEx calling SDK is the uh, Salesforce WebEx app for Salesforce, which is available on the marketplace. It comes with a bunch of other WebEx capabilities and one of them is WebEx calling where uh, the WebEx call history is uh, uh, integrated. This is used today on the WebEx for uh, logging the inbound calls on Salesforce. And they also have uh, setting up of the inbound and outbound calls from inside the Salesforce on their roadmap. Can we have the next slide? Yeah, finally, we have our very own WebEx contact center agent console, which has uh, WebEx WebRTC uh, calling uh, integrated for inbound and outbound calls. And the amazing thing about this is we have over 100,000 calls every month happening through WebEx contact center agent console. Can we have the next slide? Slowly turning. It's, yeah. There it is. Yes. So we finally have uh, our Chrome extension for WebEx calling, which is used today by one of our customer uh, Ulysse. And this Chrome extension uh, has uh, its own soft phone dialer from which you can make outbound calls by dialing to a number. Uh, you also have the live calling window where uh, you can see all the controls that we showed today in the demo, uh, right from transfer, hold, mute, and uh, ending the call. Uh, we also have a call history feature from where you can look at all your call histories. And also you can go down a level deep to see how many times you have called a particular account and what is the duration. 
uh, you can also make outbound calls from right from call history. We also have our voicemail module. This voicemail module, uh, it, it has management of listening to the voicemail. Uh, you can delete your voicemail. You can pretty much manage uh, everything about voicemail. And you can also uh, call the person uh, whose voicemail you have listened to right from inside the voicemail screen itself. And uh, this uh, and one one of the things about this Chrome extension, it's not just available for uh, Woolies. It's available publicly on the Chrome uh, extension store. Uh, anybody uses WebEx calling, they can they can download this Chrome extension and use it on everyday basis. We also have when when this Chrome extension is installed on your Chrome browser, whenever there is a phone number that you see on any of the websites. You have a tap to call icon showing right next to it. You can tap from there and have the extension launched for the same number. So that's that's about it. Uh, can we have the next slide? Yeah. So we are done with the integrations and customers, and these are the upcoming webinars that we have planned uh, from our team. Uh, so please always be on the lookout. Uh, stay tuned to developer.webs.com slash webinars. Uh, and you might see one of these uh, webinars popping up. Please do register and join uh, any of our future webinars. Can we have the next slide? Slowly but surely. There it is. That's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, happens. So finally, uh, how do you reach out to us? So whenever uh, there is some support required, we have our uh, WebSDK uh, ask space. You can always post your question to these uh, to the ask space. Or if you are on your on the Chrome extension and you have found out something, you, you have a feature gap, you have a bug, or you are requesting a new feature, you can always uh, get into the Chrome extension support space and get in touch with us. We also have the WebEx contributor space. If you find anything on the SDK that needs a fixing and you want to reach a quick PR, you can always reach a PR and post the links on this page. We will be on the lookout and we'll review and get it uh, done. And as for the developer support, we have our developer support uh, page where you can go and start a thread, uh, which will reach out to our developer support community and uh, they can uh, get, you, get you in touch with the engineering. We also have the community where you can open up a thread and anybody, uh, either someone from our support or the peer users of the SDK, they can answer uh, to your question, respond to your discussions. Uh, and if there is a need to, to reach out to the engineering, the developer support would definitely ensure that happens and your issue gets solved. We also have uh, GitHub repository issues where you can go and create issues or you can uh, start a Q&A session for anything that you are looking for. And you can also definitely post your feature requests there. We also have GitHub discussions where we will try to make any big announcements that come through for the SDK. You can always have your questions posted there or discussion open up there to have a healthy chat about anything on the WebEx SDK. We finally have our dev support email, which is devsupport at webex.com. Uh, you can reach out to this email and our executors will always ensure your emails are responded. Finally, we also have our very new uh, developers beta program where you can sign up and register. And when, whenever there is something new on any of the web SDKs, uh, we'll be having a beta version rolled out. You can sign up, you can test it out, you can give your feedback through the Go Beta portal. And if you have any feature requests that is not only SDK specific, but is web specific, you can always uh, raise a AHA request. And if it gets enough traction, who knows, your feature might get uh, added to the WebEx ecosystem. And finally, the demo repository. So whatever we showcased today on the demo, it's available on this repository. You can go there and uh, get the code for it. You can play around with it. And uh, this repository also has a readme file, which links to all of the things that you see in this particular slide. Yeah. Uh, can we have the final slide of food? Okay. Let's see how quickly this can pop up here. Just 
The shearing is a little slow today. It's there it goes. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you uh, have any ideas and some of the additions you would like to see in the Webex Colin SDK, yeah, uh, please to type them in here now. Um, or if you feel like the SDK is absolutely perfect, I guess you wouldn't have to put anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, video, transcription. Video, school recording. Yeah, call recording, probably like, you know, without using a third party, right? All right. That's nice. Call recording, call recording again. Yeah, I, I, I assume call recording would be one of those in there. And uh, uh, we... there's an interesting one. Call a tune there. Well, yeah. no, call a tune. That'd be nice. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and and multi line is another one. Like uh, it, it, right now, how many how many lines is the maximum that you can support in uh, in an SDK app? Right. Actually, it's one. Uh... Yeah, right now the SDK supports single line. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's on the pipeline somewhere to get the multi line up and running. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's all about business use cases as well. So, as soon as we start hearing about these uh, use cases where we want to do multiple lines, um, and we want to give like, okay, let's say one line is for your organization, one line is for an external sort of um, communication channel. So once we hear cases like that, I think uh, definitely the team would work on that. Yeah. yeah. And well, I think they might go along with like conference calls and things like that, you know, where you have multiple people join. Yeah, music. it looks like we have we a bunch of singers. Change the hold music. Oh, it's <laughs> the first time I've heard that request. <laughs> we'll have to dig into the use case on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Amazing responses. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close this one out. Summarization is nice. Yeah. 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 So that's about it for today. Uh, if there are any Q&As that needs answering, I think uh, we can have the Q&A. And, &A. and uh, I think uh, we have the link to the repository uh, posted on the comments uh, by Adam Weeks. We can uh, take the link from there. If you feel too lazy to look at the screen. Of the yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do. You know, I feel too easy. So. Yeah, yeah. The only the only question that we had in there was just asking if um, you know the session is going to be recorded. Uh, of course, it is. You know, all of our sessions are recorded up on our webinars page. Um, so, if you would like to, you know, share this recording with uh, you know some of your colleagues that you know feel like they would find this content interesting, um, you know, we should have that up uh, up on our webinars page here uh, within the next few days. Um, but uh, but with that, you know, it looks like we have all the uh, the questions that are answered there. And um, again, we really appreciate you joining our, our public webinars. Uh, we aim to do these monthly uh, with a different topic each time. Um, and we uh, again appreciate the the WebEx SDK team uh, putting on this presentation, uh, the the live demos, and uh, we're always happy when they're uh, when they're able to contribute to these. Um, so with that, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.